Stringers and clamps are longitudinal members that serve a number of purposes. Firstly, they provide longitudinal strength. Stringers also provide support for the flatter areas of the hull in the bilges and up in the forepeak, and clamps provide a landing for the deck beams, as on this Clem Masters Dragon. They can be fitted before planking, after finishing planking, or as I did, fitted as I planked, so that I could easily get lots of clamps on the job. I used spotted gum, the same timber as the ribs, for its qualities of strength and resilience. I used a batten to mark where I wanted them to go, then machined and tapered the timber, and steamed them in a bag, the same as I've previously shown for the lower planking, and gradually pushed them out to the hull over about an hour to an hour and a half and clamped them in place. There was a bit of edgeways bend as well, so I clamped blocks of wood strategically to bend around. Next day, they came out of the bag and after a day or two to dry, I trimmed the forward ends to fit, clamped the forward parts in place, clamped the aft sections, and marked and cut a traditional locked stepped scarf. Most of the processes are more easily done on the bench, so the stringers come in and out of the hull a few times. I dry fitted the scarf and, as I describe in my book Wooden Boat Building, used a batten and witness marks to cut the aft end to fit against the transom frame. Then I glued the scarf, putting plastic sheeting under the glued area. Next day I drilled for and drove six copper nails vertically through the scarf and rove them over. Then I sanded off the glue dabs. I primed the backs and the landing area on the ribs before fastening them off right through the planking, ribs and stringer. My boats are raised decker, so the lower shear clamp only supports the cockpit deck beams and acts like a big stringer through the rest of the boat. There's a fair bit of shape in this because of the big flare in the forward quarters, so I marked where I wanted it to go and spiled it, the same as I did for the planking in the previous episode. Though it's no more than 110 millimetres wide, four and three eighths of an inch, I used 150 millimetres or six inch stock, but even so, I had to bend the spiling batten edgeways a little to get it to fit. Steaming will allow me to edge set the clamp as well as bend it out to the hull. Actually, it was easier to steam bend it around the outside of the hull. You can see that it held most of the curve. I steamed the shorter aft sections in a bag outside the boat and clamp them in place inside. These four pieces were all bent around in a day, at the end of which I grabbed a beer with a sense of satisfaction. Marking and cutting and fitting the scarf joints were done with the same techniques described for stringers. These were heavy pieces of spotted gum, so I had to get creative with ropes and slings to manoeuvre them around. With wider stringers and clamps and a shapely hull, you may need to shape the back of the piece to fit against the ribs. 
I made a small plywood pattern about every third rib. and shape the back of the clamp at the corresponding place. Hatching them with a pencil when each was correct. I then planed in between these guide points to fare it all in. Your last plane stroke might take off a tiny bit of pencil mark at the guide points. And of course I primed and painted the backs before fastening them on with a copper nail and rove through every second rib, about one third of the width from the bottom edge. The upper nails through every other rib will go right through the outer sponson or rub rail, planking, rib and clamp, about one third of the width from the top. The sponson had to be steamed, shaped and scarfed, but before final fitting I fared the planking a couple of feet down from the lower shear because trying to do it after the sponson was on would limit the swing of the plane and fairing board. I fastened right through with six inch nails and three quarter inch rows. Now I'll move on to plank up the raised deck area like on this sister ship, Cherub. The book is available through sydneywoodenboatschool.com.au or from the Wooden Boat Store.